In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And those who sat in the region of shadow of death, light has dawned. Good morning, my friends. I would like for you to join me for a moment to reflect on these words that were taken from today's gospel lesson, the gospel of St. Matthew. Matthew, in his gospel, was actually quoting the prophet Isaiah with these words, who spoke them 800 years prior to this. But I want you to notice the words. The people who sat in darkness... The people who sat in the region and shadow of death. The word sat is the operative word here. Does the fact that it says they sat in this darkness and region and shadow of death mean anything to you? I want you to think about that. Isaiah did not say that these people walked in darkness, which would indicate activity. Nor did he say the people stood in darkness, which would possibly mean maybe prayer or hope. But these people that Isaiah was prophesying about sat in darkness. They accepted the darkness as their fate. They resigned themselves to this darkness. There was no longer any hope. You know, as we enter into the new year, 2021, we like to think of uh, renewed hope and new beginnings. And we try to inspire ourselves with optimism of new resolutions to improve ourselves and to overcome our own personal darkness. But after a few weeks, maybe even less, it seems like we all fall back into our old familiar patterns. The reason for that, my friends, is because change doesn't happen just because December 31st turns into January 1st, this 24-hour period. It's another day. We still have our common human errors about us, our sadness, our common frailties and insecurities, our loneliness and our darkness. It's still there. Change doesn't happen by itself simply by the countdown of a clock. Change comes from within, and it has its own timetable. In order to put an end to this crippling lack of spiritual growth, this lack of change in us, in order to address that which is in us that is cold and with an inability to forgive, an inability to bring in love, an inability to be unconquered by mood swings. We need to intentionally change. And St. Paisio said, desire and effort must come from us, but God will provide the power and the results. So today, I would like to offer a strategy for change for you to consider. The strategy is designed to illumine our darkness and to attract the Holy Spirit into our lives. What are we doing that grieves the Holy Spirit? The strategy I'm suggesting requires you to embrace your own priesthood. Each of you, my friends, each of you are part. You have your own royal priesthood about you. And I want you to use that priesthood to preside and celebrate your own personal liturgy. I'm talking about the liturgy after the liturgy, the liturgy outside of the church. Your everyday life, my friends, is a form of a liturgy because man is a liturgical being. He has patterns and rhythms and rituals and routines in his daily life. 
And today I'd like for you to inspect those patterns and rhythms and see whether your liturgy, your personal day-to-day -day liturgy that you're living is life-bearing and light-bearing. Are you attracting the Holy Spirit by your day-to-day -day personal liturgy? Or are you just like water running downhill, finding the least path of resistance, doing only what is convenient or what comes without effort, serving only to pamper your profane passions and pleasures, paying only lip service to the Lord your God during the day, if that is the case, then you just may find yourself in a downward spiral from walking, standing, and eventually sitting in darkness. So for the rest of this homily, let's see if we can construct a personal liturgy that spills out into your day-to-day -day life to redeem the time to bring light. And let's try to pattern this daily liturgy after the Sunday liturgy. For example, the Sunday liturgy begins with a declaration of God and his kingdom. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and unto the ages of ages. So let me suggest to you when you awake, the moment you awake, before the coffee, before the showering, before the iPads and the iTunes and the laptops and everything else, acknowledge the Lord your God. Give him glory. Glory to you, God. Glory to you. Glory to you, God. Glory to you. Glory to you, God. Glory to you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Perhaps you already have your morning routine that brings in the Holy Spirit, that attracts the Holy Spirit. That's fine. Use that. Let God be first on your mind when you awake. Do your cross. Whatever you do. I say the first hour prayer, or at least I, I have memorized certain parts of the prayer of the hours. And even if I'm in the midst of the conversation with someone at 12 or at 3, or at nine in the morning, or when I wake up, I say, excuse me, and I just go over, say what I say, you know, in a quiet, private place, and I come back. Use that morning to connect. Next, you'll notice that the church celebrates the memory of a particular saint every day. I hope you do this. If you do nothing else that I'm suggesting, I hope you do this. Find out who the saint of the day is. Read about them. Learn what they did. Invite them into your day. Commune with them. And I, I almost, I, I feel like I can guarantee that your day will, or the way you look at your day will never be the same because you're going to see that this saint is a companion to you. And you're going to see things that perhaps you've never seen before because you are in communion with this saint as your companion. It's, it's happened to me over and over again. Saints that I've never even known. I, I, someday I'm going to tell you a story of, of how the saints have, what's the word, <laughs> but into my life. <laughs> and, and there was no other explanation that that particular saint on that particular day. Amazing. See if you can do that. Next, the liturgy has petitions and prayers. Maybe it would be a good idea for you to come up with your own particular petitions and prayers. Personal prayers that mean something to you. Form them in a series of petitions to the Lord. Perhaps you are in a particular situation that requires courage. You're fearful, but you lack courage in this area. Perhaps there's a situation where you feel anxiety and you lack peace. Lord, peace, shelter me. 
under the protection of your wings. Grant peace to my life. For those of you who are feeling abandoned or feel alone, you pray for attachment and relational security. How about the creed? Every Sunday, every liturgy, we cite the Nicene Creed from the 4th century. People in congregations from generations from the 4th century till today are repeating that creed. That is an amazing thought. All those congregations repeating through generations and generations, millennia. Well, how about coming up with your own creed? Take the time to craft a document, as the fathers of the church did, of what is true to your deep self. I believe my body needs to recreate. I believe I need rest. I believe I need boundaries for some people who want to tell me what to think. There's all sorts of things you can incorporate in your liturgy, my friends. Your song, art, symbols, just like the Sunday liturgy. The possibilities are endless. Be creative. But let me end with the high point of the liturgy, the Eucharist. The calling down of the Holy Spirit to change that which is common into something divine. How do you feel? How do you value? What do you value? What in your life needs a divine change? If you could call down the Holy Spirit and change anything profane in your life to something divine, what would it be? Take the time to craft or to amend your day-to-day -day liturgy, my friends. Take out what is binge-worthy, Take out what is grieving to the Holy Spirit and transform your liturgy. Remember, you are a royal priesthood. You are worthy. Axios. God bless you.